What's up, guys? Welcome to the Winter Game Jam stream. I'm so glad you're here. Um, we got 30, 35 people. Thanks for coming. Probably got a lot of GDU students. This is actually... Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, I'm always having mic problems. Um, this is normally... So for the Game Dev Unlocked student program, we usually have a monthly Q&A where I try to help everybody. And... Uh, we wanted to make this time, we wanted to do it a public stream just to show all the games we made to everybody. And you guys can download them too. There's a link in the description for the Game Jam page on Itch. And eight games. They look really, really awesome. Uh, winter themed, Christmas themed, holiday themed. Hello. I got my chat here. Um, yeah. And so this is like normally this is for GDU students only, but we wanted to to hang out with everybody and say hi to all the YouTuber subscribers. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. And hopefully one day you can join us in the school. Um, what else? Yeah, I wanted to give an update also in the school, which, you know, like our students are here, but there's some really cool updates coming if you guys decide to join for those who are not subscribed, not enrolled in Game Dev Unlocked. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks, David. That's my name. It's a good name. Thanks for joining randomly. This is great, Laffy, and we got Cliff. Cliff uh, made one of the games too, and they look—they really look like so much fun. We're gonna go over the games. Um, in these monthly Q and A's for students, I answer their questions too. I do research because they send me their game dev questions, and I research them and give them good answers. So we'll do a little bit of that today. Um, yeah, how how are you guys? It's almost—it's almost Christmas. That's the holiday of choice that I, I, I participate in. Happy holidays to everybody in this winter season. Yeah, we're going to be going to Vegas, Las Vegas to visit family, and then to California to visit my wife's family, and that will be fun. Um, man, I'm doing great now. I was sick. My whole family was sick. We caught RSV, some respiratory virus. And it affects babies really bad. And I, I literally got puked on 10 times in one night. It was it was horrible. So yeah, I was supposed to do this live stream a couple weeks ago. But I'm better. And I'm doing it before the holiday break. So I'm happy to be here and to check out the Winter Game Jam games. That's going to be awesome. Uh, what else is going on? Do you guys know in my big biographical video, the one that has the most views on my YouTube channel, it's like a little story about how I got started, like how indie making indie games changed my life. I opened that video with some clips from me skateboarding in a small skate park in Virginia. And I just got an email today from the guy who built that park. So I was in high school and he must have been like college aged when he started building the park and everything. And it's just a skate park in the middle of the woods in Virginia. And I don't know, I just he sent me an email and it was like the highlight of my week because he just said like I can't believe that skate park had such a big impact on your childhood and it was so cool seeing a video that you made talking about your life and how it resonated with everybody. And I, I loved like just talking to them and stuff. It really made my day. Um, hey James, thanks for coming. Terrence, Roughnick, thank you for being here. Um, what else is going on? I, uh, I'm working as a contractor from, with my friends from The Void and they've created a new company called Limitless Flight or Jump. And it's basically base jumping without the dangers of killing yourself if you're inexperienced. <laughs> like jumping off a mountain and using a wingsuit. And it's all done using game technology and hyper reality um, equipment, which is like, it's not just VR, it's like tons of stuff to like engage all five of your senses practically. And I'm helping them, and I'm having to really get a good grasp on, on Unreal Engine, and that's been fun. And so, yeah, I had a meeting with all my old friends, um, and getting this video system working, and I'm having a great time doing that. And I'm only doing, like, part-time work, and I'm still finishing the physical special, physical edition, special limited edition of the first tree. It's my last thing I'm ever working on with the first tree spent a long time on it because this is like the swan song of this game that's taken up the last six years of my life and it will have I, I partnered with strictly limited games and it's going to be on switch and it'll have like posters and um, postcards and notepads and stickers and acrylic art standees and 
a soundtrack. It's the first time the soundtrack's been physically produced on a CD, and that'll be part of this special edition. And yeah, that's been awesome. I'm finishing up all these odds and ends, so then I can finally just, in 2022, dive into my next game, which I'm really excited to work on. Um, yeah. Thank you, TGG, for getting the seven-day game course. That's awesome. Yeah, that was like a little entry-level thing, because so many people were like, I can't afford the full course. So I decided, what if I gave them a sample and then help them get started making a game quickly using asset stores and using quick, you know, sa time-saving, not tricks, but time-saving techniques so you can finish something which will motivate you to keep making games because that's the only reason I was successful is because I forced myself to finish games which led to other games I made. And yeah, you just can't give up, right? So cool. Um, Adam says, are making some, are making some of your games right now. Sorry for my English. I, I'm working, I, I started on my new game, but I just keep getting distracted because I have a lot of projects taking up my time. But 2022, I think a lot of things will be done. I'm still adding stuff to the course, to Game Dev Unlocked, which I'll talk about in a bit. And yeah, what else? Um, I'm here, I'll show you guys. This is, I love building computers. This is the i9, the brand new Alder Lake. Can you see that? Come on, focus. Um, it's so cool. Um, there's a huge, as you may know, there's a huge chip shortage. And I really, I need a new computer because the computer right here is six years old. It's old Skylake build from 2016. It's what I built the first tree on actually, but it's it's time. Like the processor is so old, it hangs up on stuff. I'm surprised it's even surviving the stream right now. Um, I was playing Halo Infinite and my CPU is literally at 100%. So I'm like, okay, it's time to upgrade. And I did make another computer a while ago, but that's for my workplace. That's for Jump VR, the, the thing I was telling you about. So I that's in the office. So I need another home computer. I need to be game developer centric like game developer friendly kind of machine and so and like because that that machine i made a while ago it's a video on youtube actually it's like a thread ripper amd thread ripper which is great for video and it's great for unreal like especially like with light baking and like shader compilation but like i want single core performance that's kind of still what games are single core and this intel i9 is the best single core out there so i'm excited about that and then here's the huge thing I'm trying to fight the good fight. I just can't stand scalpers. <laughs> and because of the chip shortage, you try to buy DDR5 RAM, which is kind of what you need for this new new, new uh, system, Alder Lake. You, you could do DDR4 RAM, but I want it to be future-proof. I don't want to have to upgrade this for like six years. And I did the new egg shuffle where they like enter the lottery and I, I got it. I got DDR5 RAM, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> Um, normally, this I bought for probably 300 400 bucks, which is still expensive, but on eBay it goes for $1,500. So I'm really glad I kept, I worked on it for like days and days and weeks, weeks trying to get like, how can I get DDR5 RAM without spending $1,000? So I'm excited about that. I'm probably going to build that machine next, after holiday break. And yeah, I'm going to do a small form factor computer, which I'm excited about. I want it to be small so I can keep it on my desk. I, I love building computers. And I'll use my old GPU, which is not old. I bought it last year, but it's a 3080, which now those are impossible to find. So it's crazy. It's it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, Terrence says this Halo is so good. I love Halo Infinite. It seriously is. They just got the gameplay loop perfect. I, You know, the playlist issues, I was kind of... I just wasn't in the mood to play CTF. I just was like, I want to play Slayer. Please give me Slayer and hopefully SWAT. And they did. They they updated the game like in record time. I kind of feel bad for those developers. Um, but they added it before Christmas, and I love playing Slayer and SWAT and all that stuff with my brothers and stuff. It's been fun. But yeah, that's me. Um, I wanted to show you wanted to show you what I'm excited about. I'm excited for this new small form factor PC I'll I'll build soon. And that'll be my new computer for the next five, six years. And yeah, um, we got fifty-five people watching. This is great. Digital Marketing Canada asks, do you have any plans on making a complete paid course on Playmaker, which covers everything that Playmaker can do? Who that, that, you know, Playmaker, there's so many actions, especially with all like the expandable ecosystem actions. This action is basically like a script. 
I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think anyone could make an online course that covers everything. But I tried to make Game Dev Unlocked, the full course, which I try to show you how to make a game like the first tree and do, do it all in Playmaker. So yeah, that's the kind of game we focus on. Um, but yeah, it doesn't cover absolutely everything you could ever do. But we talk about how each genre can be, you can try to go for each genre of game just by uh, using the asset store and using a framework that you can buy, whether it's like a real-time strategy game or a visual novel game. There are assets for everything, but it does take a little bit of finesse to find those good assets that will work for your game that you want to make. So anyway... All right, thanks guys for watching. Hey Sunny, hey Jason. Um, I do not know what Halo's original name is. I know their Bungie's first game was Marathon, I think, for Mac. I don't know Halo's original name. Anyway, okay, yeah, that's enough about me. I did want to do a shout out, some GDU announcements, which, um, like I said, this is this is for. Am I too loud on my clipping? Um, I wanted to do a GDU announcements because normally this is for members only, but we wanted to open it up to the YouTube public. Um, let's see here. Hold on a second. I wanted to show uh, some cool things that happened actually today. Um, our very own Dan in uh, GDU, he's been working on this game for a few years now, and he just released, and it's called Skyfleet. And it's so... I played this on a Feedback Friday when I first opened up the course. And it's this action, real-time strategy game. And he's, like, super talented developer. And here's the thing. He's, like, he's doing everything right. And he, he follows the advice that, you know, I try to give developers. And he's doing his own thing to make the game really good. He's doing the broadcast thing, watching the developer play, which gets a ton of views. 140 people are watching that now. And here's the thing he did, which I haven't done, but which I would recommend all developers do. He submitted his game to the Steam Next Fest. And that is how you get wishlist nowadays. And last I heard, he had about 9,000 wishlists before launch. So I'm almost positive Dan is going to hit the front page of Steam, either today or tomorrow. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I hope he does. Gets on the new and trending tab, because that will skyrocket his sales and open up future doors of opportunity. So congrats, Dan. Your game is awesome. Um, what else did I did I want to show? Um, this is another GDU, like, really cool announcement. Kev uh, released Hop Legs on Nintendo Switch, which is not an easy thing. That's an amazing accomplishment. And it's such a fun, goofy game, and it's gotten like played by huge streamers already. Kind of reminds me of like you know like those control simulator games that are kind of hard, easy to learn, hard to master, like Quop or Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. Um, yeah, I think it's multiplayer too. Amazing! Congrats, Kev. I'm sure you're seeing really at least you know you have a great price point, you have a great capsular. I bet you're seeing a lot of sales on Switch. That's really exciting. And then, oh, I wanted to show you guys. Here's the big announcement for all GDU students. The Unreal Engine section goes live today. I'm going to hit the publish button right after the stream. And here's what I did. I'm not an Unreal Engine 5 expert, but I contacted someone who is. He's my favorite teacher, and he's the largest YouTuber on, on YouTube on Unreal Engine. And his name's the Unreal Sensei. And we co collaborated, and we he has made a first-person puzzle game called Temple of Light. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to teach everybody in GDU how to make a gorgeous game using assets, using like the Quixel Mega Bridge stuff, and Lumen, and Nanite. And we're going to make a first-person puzzle game that's re really similar to the Talos Principle or the Witness. And I just love, yeah, we, we, he decided to go with uh, Unreal Sensei, um, Zach, he decided to go with lasers to really utilize the Lumen system from Unreal Engine 5. And you do everything without code using blueprints. So you don't have to learn C++. I'm so excited to go through this. I've been helping him get assets ready and coming up with the story. And this is going to be available today for all... Um, GDU students and it's free free for all GDU students so I'm so excited this game like it looks gorgeous and it's a fun puzzle game the graphics are amazing like all the great things about Unreal Engine 
and Engine 5 all in one place so you can learn it. And so I'm really excited for that. Um, that unlocks, I wanted to show, where's, yeah, I wanted to show like all the videos. It's not all the videos, but it's like, a, it's like five or six hours and then the rest are coming probably in January. And so of course we'd love if I have five coupon codes, if you guys want to join the school and get all this content for free and join our monthly Q and A's and get some steam keys and get Adobe creative cloud, get Adobe, you get Adobe creative cloud collection for 60% off. Um, there's five coupon codes and then they're out and that, that'll be key, give it 50% off. So we'd love to have you join. Um, we have a lot of happy customers. We also have a money back guarantee for people. It's if it, you decide it's not for you. And yeah, it's, there's a coupon code in the link in the description below. Five seats. So we'd love to have you. All right. We should play some games soon. I, I want to check the chat, though. I want to see how you guys are doing. Hey, hey, Brandon. Thanks for coming. Unreal Sensei. Yes. I, I love I love Zach. He's such a good teacher. And I've been watching his videos, and they're really good. The game I'm excited to play and to make. So I'm pretty excited for that. Um, yeah, did it, if I'm sorry if I missed any questions, this is like, I don't know if I'll have a ton of time to go over chat questions because this is kind of for the members only thing, but if I do have time, I'd love to help you guys out. Um, yeah, Adam, thank you for playing the first tree. That means a lot. Oh, Dan's here. Thank you, Dan. Um, congrats on your game. It looks really good. The capsule art's great. You're doing everything right. I think you're going to hit the front page of Steam either today or tomorrow, but keep you know, this is what I talked about in my GDC talk, like keep going, like you don't take a break until you see your game in the new and trending tab. So keep posting in Facebook groups, keep posting on Reddit and Imager and TikTok. Um, keep doing that as much as you can so that you can get enough traction to like catch the Steam algorithm's attention. So cool. Um, yeah, we have eight winter themed games, which I'm gonna talk about. And yeah, I, I'm excited. We're gonna play, we're gonna play them. And did I, did I miss anything? Yeah, I talked about Unreal content. Talked about some cool GDU shout outs going on. Oh, shoot. Um, for my monthly Q&As, I answer questions and answers. I answer questions. That's what I do. And so the, I did have four questions in my backlog I needed to answer. And so um, I, I, I want to go over that right now. So let me move my chat window right here. Um, yeah, this is so yeah, I try to keep it you know, to keep my schedule optimized, we have all the students send questions in a Google form and then I do research so I can give them good answers. And we had four questions for the month of December. So yeah, let's, let's go over that right now. Can you guys see this? All right, the first question from GDU student Mike L. He says, hi David, I'm currently creating a demo for my game. My original plan was to use the demo to collect emails but I'm not sure if it is a good idea as I don't have any social following yet. So my question is whether it is better to either one, publish the demo on Steam, two, use the demo on the next Steam Fest, or three, just use it as an opt-in gift for emails. Thank you. All right, I know, I know the answer to this question. And it's something, just talking to all these marketing experts and to other current indie devs, this is what I would do 100%. I would polish your demo and submit your game to the next Steam Fest, no, option two. I would definitely do that. Um, some people still find success doing like the prologue, which is like a demo with a separate Steam app ID, or even doing the demo attached to your actual game that, that people can wish list. But Steam Next Fest, the, yeah, the, yeah, Steam Next Fest, that is what's getting huge wish lists for indies. Like they make the biggest difference in the world. You can get 5,000 wish lists if your demo is polished enough. And from what I can tell, those wish lists are pretty quality. Like they're pretty good. So that's what I would do. And I wouldn't worry about opt-in gifts. I, I, you could do a demo like a button on your Steam page, but NextFest is where people are actively seeking out games to like to wish lists, like get full games. So like make your demo like really solid 10, 15 minutes. When it make, and you, you gotta make them dine for more. You gotta want them being like, oh, that's it, oh, I can't wait. And if you can end a demo like that, you will get a ton of wish lists and probably a ton of sales. So yes, Steam Next Fest for sure. And Nico says that demos can hurt your sales. And that is true, but you need the right kind of demo. 
and Steam Next Fest, I think people are in like they're like trying out. It's like a sample, like going to Costco and sampling all the foods out there. Um, people are in that mood to try new things and to potentially wish list or buy. But it's true, like if a demo is lame or you scratch that itch, then a demo can hurt your game. So make sure it's that a right type of demo where it's really strong and polished, but it leaves them wanting more, and then you'll be good. All right, there's a question from Thomas S. What are your primary motivations for going back to a nine to five job? It seems that you're in the ideal position for your career, and my goal is to leave my nine to five to work on my own projects full time. I'm curious to hear what you don't like about being self-employed, specifically making indie games. Would you do anything differently? I would do a lot of things differently, but this has been a big learning experience for me. And something I do want to clarify is, and something I want to point out is that everybody's different and everybody's personality type is different. Everybody has their own different hangups, things that worry them. I have a lot of anxiety about things, but it's taken me actually just going for it to learn what works for me, especially as self, a self-employed business owner. That's what I am. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a business owner, and that brings a lot of stress. It brings a lot of trying to keep customers happy. But also, I'm an artist, and that's where I've had issues, is I want to just be that cool artist game developer that makes whatever he wants. But we have this thing called capitalism. <laughs> I don't know where the market speaks, and the market, the market is so brutally competitive now that if you're not balancing those things that... No one, you know, I don't really like doing. I don't want to market. I don't want to get death threats on Reddit when I post a GIF. But they're kind of like a necessary evil so that I can do the thing I am passionate about, which is sharing my stories with the world through games. So I've had issues balancing this thing that used to be a creative outlet that was pure passion. I play, I made the first tree while I worked full time and there was no worry about bills being paid because I had a job and I had a job I enjoyed with good people. There were like, there were issues with the job, like any job, but I was, I was happy, you know, then I quit this job and then all the bills, all the things of this income needing to come in to pay a mortgage and to feed my children that turned, that got put on to my passion projects, my hobby projects, my art projects, and it's been hard reconciling those things. So what I'm saying is you need to get good. If this is your goal is to be self-employed and work on your own projects full time, you have to get good at setting boundaries and setting your own schedule and being very self-reliant and very self-driven so that if you make a game, um, and you need it to pay the bills, you need this game to make $50,000, then what are you doing to make sure that game sells? And that's where a lot of stress can come in. So right now, I'm not working 9 to 5. I work 10 hours a week with my friends as a contractor with this VR base jumping thing. And I love it. It's been great. And then it still gives me time to work on my passion projects. And now a good chunk of my bills are paid, but I still have 20, 30 hours a week to work on those things that are really important to me that may not be financially successful because I don't want to make a first tree two, I don't want to make another animal exploration game. And honestly, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of burnt out on making YouTube, which is an incredible grind. YouTube is so competitive and the ad revenue is bad. And I'm trying to find a balance of doing what I love, but also being true to myself, if that makes sense doing what I love, but also paying the bills and being true to myself. Sorry, that's, it's going to be different for each person though. But I do think a lot of people can make it work being self-employed. But I also think it can, you can totally be happy working on your side projects without, like you can work on your side projects while still paying the bills. And it is cool to have a goal to shoot for that though, to be full time. Um, it will just take setting boundaries and being honest with yourself. Hope that helps. Thank you, guys. I'm reading the chat when I can. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the love from Pakistan. Yeah, and Jason, it sounds like Jason does kind of the same thing, too. Like, contract. And, well, yeah, he doesn't make games for a living. I'm trying to do a little bit of both. But it takes a balance, you know, being honest with yourself. 
Yeah, and uh, it's it's wise. I really like. I think it's wise, and you got to know yourself, right, to like make sure that you're doing what makes you happy, because it's gonna be different for each person too, right? Hello from Bulgaria. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. All right, zero ticks says. Will the Unreal section of the course be included for existing members or will this be separate? This is free for existing members. And it's also one of the last big updates for Game Dev Unlocked. I, I might up the price because now there's like hours and hours. Now you can master Unity, which I still recommend for beginners, and then you can master Unreal Engine. And with all the stuff I've made for it, I've tried to brain up everything I know. And that includes all the Playmaker stuff, Publishing on Steam stuff. I, I do. I show you mobile how to publish on Android and iOS, and how to get featured on the Apple on the App Store. Um, I talk about consoles, and yeah, it's everything I know. And this is like the last big thing that's been requested is Unreal Engine. So, this is it. The last big thing. There still will be videos added in January, and they will be free for for students. All right. Last question. We had four questions for the student Q and A. Hello, David. I'm a 17-year-old from India, and I'm making a VR PC game. Uh, thank you a lot for making GDU. I was hoping if I could contact you, contact you directly somehow, because I'm hoping to be a successful game dev, and I want to make it in my career. As I mentioned, I'm making a game, and I'm running into a problem in skinning my character. This is a custom character 3D model, but for some reason the rig is moving perfectly, but the skin is stuck in a T-pose. Could you help me, please? First of all, thanks for being in the course, and you're at the start of a really cool career, and that's amazing you're 17 and you're doing all this. And also, just to soothe your fears, and maybe you're getting worried because you're running into all these dead ends, because I just want to let you know it's a very, very normal thing. And I can't tell you how many thousands of times I ran into a problem like, oh, my, my character isn't animating stuck in a t-pose did i screw up my rig how do i import animations how do i use the human humanoid avatar how do i import blah 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 you know i could go on for hours about all the problems i ran into and so you're asking if you can contact me directly and i'm, I'm unable to help everybody who asks for for dev questions i just i just can't and i'm sorry but that's why i made the course right i made I made Slack, I mean, not Slack, I made Discord channel because we have a help needed, so I would definitely encourage you to post in the help needed section. Um, but I appreciate you sending me this question, and I did do research. I spent 30 minutes trying to figure out what kind of hangups you'd be running into. Because honestly, like with rigging and like skins, uh, skinned meshes and Unity, it could be, it honestly could be a multitude of things. So it's hard to pinpoint what it is. But here is, let me get my notes out. Here's what I found where I'm almost sure it could, like you're probably using Blender. And so after you make the skeleton and after you paint weights to the skeleton, to the skin, you still need to bind that skeleton to, you need to bind that skeleton to the skin or to like the actual 3D mesh. And maybe you know that already. Um, I did find a couple tutorials on how to do that from a game developer perspective and how to import it into Unity. Um, there, with humanoids, humanoids need to follow a very specific hierarchy in their 3D model, like from the parent-child uh, skeleton, like that, that mesh, right? Like the skeleton hierarchy in the outliner, like if you're using Blender or Maya. And so Unity has a really cool feature where they automate that rigging, assuming that your character is humanoid. And they call it humanoid because, like, I don't know, Humanoid just means any kind of creature that stands on two legs and walks like a human. That, that's it. So human-esque in any way, meaning they're not four-legged quadrupeds like a fox, right? So basically, you need to look into the avatar like retargeting feature in Unity. And I have two videos here. I'll put them, I'll put them in the chat. I'll put them in the chat for you guys. Here's one video I liked, Star King, that should help answer the T. That that talks about the retargeting thing with the avatar with humanoids. And then this one is an amazing overview. This was my favorite overview by far. And I've put them in the chat. Hopefully you see them. If you're not here, then it should replay when you watch this video out again. But I would definitely watch those two videos. And I would use the avatar retargeting for humanoids in Unity. 
because it will take your rig and kind of like remap it so that it will work with any kind of humanoid animation because that's got to be what's happening like they're they're the right like there's the bones aren't in the right spot so it's not uh, synchronizing to your animations correctly and then there's one other hack that I've actually used before um, in Mixamo which is like an animation library if you I think you can in Mixamo you can just uh, upload your 3d model even if it's like the rig isn't finished or it's not like uh, the skeleton isn't binded to your uh, mesh correctly I think Mixamo will make it work no matter what it kind of does like again like a humanoid retargeting thing with the rig and then you can I think you can re-download it or something I would definitely look at Mixamo about uploading your 3d model and another side point is you're doing advanced stuff for a 17 year old if you're making a custom 3d model and you're painting all the weights on a mesh and doing the skeleton and stuff like that's amazing like I think it's incredible and you should like keep keep that up but if you start getting stuck and you're like this is so complicated don't feel bad because people spend decades mastering rigging like that that's literally literally their job for 30 or 40 years in the industry is like I'm a I'm a senior like rigging artist you know what I mean so it's good to learn the basics but if you keep getting stuck because you're making it from scratch which is incredible really like it's pretty that's pretty monumental if you're able to pull that off don't feel bad if you can't and like check out the asset store and see how you can modify an existing asset is what I'm saying so good luck with that um, ask for help and the help needed on the on the discord channel and yeah I, I wish you luck thank thank you for your questions guys so yeah those were our questions from GDU students TGG says is there an age that is good for game developing? Oh yeah, like I started making mods for games when I was 14 and that was like just level design, but you know, I was creating textures. I tried to make animations. I was really bad at it with those old games, but I did like finish projects and I let the world download it, which was really huge for me saying like, oh, I can do it, I can finish something. And you know, I released them for free and everything, but I started off learning as much as I could and also like looking up stuff on the internet from a very early age and how to like self, you know, to teach myself how to do these things. So anyway, um, yeah, those are the questions. We should play some games. This is the winter game jam. And I wonder how many people we got here from who participated. Maybe they'll watch later as well. But we had eight GDU students. And this was all thanks to Arcania, our community manager at GDU. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, for setting this up. Um, yeah, this is great. Yeah, Sonny is here. Sonny is part of GDU, and he started at 14, which is great. Alex says, hey, David, I think I'm ready to get into the course. Is it open for me to join right now? Um, yes, please. There, there's five seats in in the uh, course. There's five coupon codes. I'm just doing five seats, and you should redeem one now because it's you can't get it 50% off anywhere. Um, not publicly, so yeah. There, there's five seats for 50% off and then I'll probably they'll be closed so we'd love to have you join Alex I think let me see if there's any left real quick I just want to see if you guys if there's still some yeah there's still some seats left so if you guys wanna you wanna enroll for 50% off now's the time um, Matt Siff says do you have a schedule for pauses to avoid eye strain and stiff neck Man, that's interesting because my wife is an artist and she's been having to go to a physical therapist because her neck is like freezing up and she's getting huge like spinal pain and all this stuff and her like physical therapist and and like a net and like a, this spinal professional said just never stay in the same place for too long like every like 15 actually what what is what did they say they said like it's a good idea just like every three minutes so she'll put on a song while she's working on art and then um the, the the doctor said just every three minutes like at the you play a song like on Spotify or something then after three minutes you just move your head like this and go back and forth and basically all these doctors have said that standing still in one spot is the enemy to good good health for your spine so just don't be afraid to move and to stretch a little bit even if it's every three minutes and then every hour I think we're encouraged to like get up out of the chair at least and walk around a bit yeah, movement is what will save your back and your 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 skeleton, I guess. 
All right, let's play some games. I just want to chill. I just want to have some fun before before the crazy holiday season. Oh yeah, let's let's look at the games. Let's let's check out what we got. Um, we have some amazing entries here, um, and I'm really excited to play some of these because some a lot of these developers are really successful. We have Jeff who released like he had one of the most popular horror games on itch for a season, The Interview, and he made a game in three days called Winter's Gift. This one was by uh, Guy Pinked. I think I said that right. Um, and he, I don't know how he does it. He makes these incredibly polished games in only like a few days every time. And he made, uh, excuse me, he made Christmas Apocalypse with zombies and Santa. That one's going to be fun. And remember, you guys, you guys can all download these games um, below. Like, yeah, there's a link in the description. So you got to check them out. They're all free. Maybe name your own price if you want to support the developers, which I encourage. So, yeah, I got them all downloaded. Hopefully they don't cause any issues. I have actually started them up. But, yeah, we'll see if they work. And I'm excited. <laughs> Winter's Gift. I think, I, can think, I think we should start with Winter's Gift. Let's click on it here. Um, I, think, I think I'm going to love this one. A short horror story about a girl named Winter. All right. I'm, I'm excited. Let's, let's play. I might, I might put on my headphones for this. All right, can you guys, you should be able to hear, hear that. Winter's Gift made an unreal engine. Cliff says it's legit scary. <laughs> I really enjoyed the interview, so I'm really excited for this. But now I'm like kind of freaked out. I didn't know how scary it would be. Can you guys hear the audio? Is it too low? Let me know in the chat. Winter was generally a good kid. She enjoyed most things about her life, except for one thing. I'm kind of... I wonder if you guys... I wonder if I would have known if it was scary or not, if I would be freaked out now. I just don't know what to expect. Winter despised her namesake. It wasn't because it was cold or snowy or the days were short. It was because it was almost Christmas. Her family had a strange tradition. They drew names from a hat and had to make presents for each other. In winter, she hated it. <laughs> I love the snow effects. It looks so excellent. And I think you're, I'm assuming this is your voice acting, Jeff. And I, I love, like, the pacing. The pacing is very, like, you're taking your time, allowing the dialogue to breathe, and it really helps. Man, how does Unreal Engine look so good, so effortlessly? Oh, the music is perfect. Is this a screamer? <laughs> oh, crap. I'm obsessed with looking at environments. Oh, okay. The music is playing, so I'm not super freaked out, but I'm... Winter I'm a little stuck freaked. her hand in the hat. She pulled out a single name. She slowly unfolded the piece of paper, looked at it, and realized Ooh. there was no one left <laughs> to make presents for. Ew. Her eyes are freaky. Ew. The light bulb breaking, it it really did like, it put like a, and I was like kind of, like the music going through the whole time, it didn't just make it scary, it made it like melancholy which I like. Ooh, like, yeah, just, it gave me goosebumps. I think that was great. Three days. That's amazing job, Jeff. Thank, thanks for making that. That was fun. I love the music in it. It was kind of a twist ending. And it was like, it had a beginning, middle, and end. 
that was great that and it was like yeah it just it was enough to put me on edge you could have done a jump scare and i would have forgiven you but i'm kind of glad it just it existed on its own didn't have a, a a big jump scare at the end that was cool yeah that's winter's gift guys um you guys should check it out that was really fun and i'm that's just that's me though like i'm obsessed with just wandering environments exploring the environment and like trying to gather pieces of story like i saw like the bloody handprint on the door like i'm the kind of guy or like i'm playing last of us and i'm being chased by enemies and i'm like i'll see like a really amazing vacuum cleaner 3d model and i'm like oh i gotta stop and look at that and i'll be getting shot at and stuff I'm like wow that's what a cool environment what amazing 3d work um that's that's cool the jump scare was the friends we made along the way. Yeah, I loved it. Good job. Thanks for submitting that to the Game Jam. All right, should we move on to Christmas Apocalypse? This is from Guy Pinked, and he's a talented developer. And I love all the feedback you guys leave, too. Thank you, James, and everyone for being such awesome members of the community. Uh, I, I love how this game looks. It's probably it's probably going to be really fun and action-packed. So let's do Christmas Apocalypse. It even got the little icon. Made with Unity. Deliver all presents and kill all the zombies. Okay, right mouse click to aim. Space to put presents under the trees. So can I aim? Oh shoot. There we go. Okay, I think the mouse isn't locked, so I'm gonna have to be careful. Oh! <laughs> I love the gib. The gib. The sound is. The music's pretty. So, let's press space, okay. Do I have to just keep going? Love the blood. <laughs> so my mouse isn't locking to the center of the screen, which means I might, I might misclick. I apologize. I should be getting the headshot, right? Yeah, the headshots seem to make a huge difference. Holy crap. All right, this is awesome. Okay. <laughs> I feel like they're not attacking me. Are they attacking me? Or maybe they don't want to attack me on level one. All right, I think. I like the, the fire as well. The fire like helps like do a marker, like a visual marker of where I should head to next. I don't feel like I've gotten lost yet, which is is a good thing. Woohoo! <laughs> You delivered all the presents. Thanks for playing. This game was made for the GDU number three winter jam in a bit more than one day. Wow, less than three days. I might add a couple things to it over the next couple days to fully wrap it up. Let me know what you think. I think it was awesome. I gotta do it again, actually. Um Man, and also like that capsule. Alright. <laughs> I like how headshots actually do make a difference. So I know it's made in one day, so I can't really like criticize anything really oh wait those mushrooms i feel like honestly like if this was like a seasonal game on like the app store and you do free to play i think you could get so many downloads like if you did like yeah you had like the little touch screen controls on an iphone or whatever like i could just see a bunch of i guess the blood might hurt its chances of getting featured on the app store um and i don't think the, the, the zombies fight me at all and also because they group up if i had grenades like maybe do grenade collectibles and just so you can get like a big chunk of them at once that would be so epic <laughs> or maybe like a sniper or like like a what's the word like a crossbow where like the arrow would go straight through multiple enemies that could be so satisfying if you can like you know like you create a train like in call of duty zombies or something and then you get the crossbow and like <clears throat> like go straight through 10 zombies in a row and you get a combo multiplier or something 
I know you made. I know you made this in one day. So, <laughs> um, I love it for what it is. After one day, I just like I get excited because I think about like the the possibilities. The AI is really good too. Like it won't like they're not all like chasing you the whole time. Like if they see you, then they start to follow you, which is good. This is so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, the like, like how the oh shoot, like how the ragdoll man, like ragdoll never gets old. Oh my god, I love this game. Again, I said this about Guy Pink's last game, where I was like, it's like you should you should polish this up and make it a real game. And he, I think he actually started to consider it. He's like, wow, maybe I should. This has so much promise. That was like that sand, that action sand dune game. I forgot what that was called. Oh, and there's a Discord, too. You guys can join that. That one was fun. Yeah, if you did, like, if you worked on that one for, like, a month and added, you know, like, grenades, maybe, and, like, combo, like, you know, try to, like, link together combos. Like, oh, you killed 20 zombies. And you, like, did it for free, like, on maybe ads on iOS. Like, something where, like, casual gamer, like, would see the cap, like, just the icon and be like, oh, zombie and Santa's. Uh, that zombies and Santa, that sounds pretty hilarious. I bet you could get like hundreds of thousands of downloads. And that's when like ad revenue can actually start to add up, you know. That's great. The, the rigor mortis sets in quick. I don't the ragdoll, like and that's something that's relatively simple to set up. And that's so that was so funny. Futurama Santa. I need to check that out. Uh blood, some confetti. Crossbow's a good idea. Yeah, use fire to kill them. Yeah, those are all good ideas. Man, it's fun. I can't believe... Isn't that, like, amazing, like, the age we live in? And I, I know, like, there's stock assets, which is fine. I'm a huge fan of using assets, especially, like, Cinti Studios and stuff. But isn't it amazing you could make something like that in a day? Like, you get the, the music, you get the sound effects... You add the graphics, you do the controls, and it's done in a day. Like, that's... This is, like, seriously, it's an unprecedented time in game development where you can make something like that in a day. Because trust me, 10 years ago, you could not do that. And 20 years ago, you had to be... You had to create your own game engine. You know what I mean? And then that puts you in the very, very small set of people who could make and finish a game. And now it's like you could make like this hilarious zombie Santa killing machine game in a day. I just I just love it. All right, moving on. That was Christmas Apocalypse. And like, can we talk about like this capsule art? That's why I was like, if that icon was, <laughs> and I don't know if he drew this. Maybe he did. Um, maybe he grabbed it from somewhere. Maybe like public domain image or something, or got permission. But if I saw that icon and I'm just browsing iOS app store or whatever or Android, right? That that alone is enough for me to click on it. Well done. That was fun. All right. Uh, we got a game from James. I love his games. I love first person exploration games. Uh, this one's called Christmas at the Overlook, which, uh, yeah, it's based on The Shining, which you got to love The Shining. This is a perfect winter theme idea. And it looks. I am like a little concerned I'm going to get lost because I saw this and I was like, <gasps> I was like, oh crap, I might not do very well in this game. But yeah, it reminds me of the ending of The Shining, which I, I'm sure if you guys have seen it, you you know what, I won't, I won't spoil it with for anybody who for some reason hasn't seen The Shining yet. But yeah, there's a maze at the end. Um, Yeah, this is, it looks fun and I love the environments. So yeah, we should we should dive in. Is is James in the chat? Um, this this will be fun though. Christmas at the Overlook, and it looks like it's a maze, and I will probably get lost. By the way, maybe we can do it together though. Got the got the shining synth. Film school, we studied the beginning of the, the Shining with the music, or like the helicopter shot flying over, like the the out, you know, the, the house, the mansion. Okay, Danny, 
Tony will help you solve this maze in no time. An easier version of the maze. You solved the maze before, so this should be simple. Jack, you have to be insane. Oh my gosh. I, ugh, should I do the, the normal? Should I do Danny? Oh man. I, I feel like... I don't know how long this will take. I think I will... I'll do Wendy. Let's do the original maze. I might get lost. Labyrinths and Breath of the Wild. I, I never got super frustrated with those. Yes. Man, can, can I really find 15? I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried. Will I be able? Maybe I should have done the easy difficulty. This is an easy kind of game. I could like actually look at the chat and give you guys good answers. <laughs> Cause it's kind of like it's kind of relaxing, aside from the scary, shiny music. It's nice just walking around a maze. last movies was Artificial Intelligence, AI, and then Spielberg finished it or something. And that movie, was that was that a great movie? I don't know. I never saw it. Was that like a masterpiece? Probably not. I feel like all the masterpieces from Kubrick were 80s and early 90s. But I, I actually, I do love Kubrick. I love 2001. My favorite film of his actually is Paths of Glory, which is an old black and white World War I movie. I think it's World War I. One of the few World War I movies I've seen. Oh man, I'm so screwed. I might have to... <laughs> I've been looking... <laughs> um, I've been looking forever. Yeah, I haven't seen AI. I might have to do the easy difficulty, and I hope, I hope James forgives me. Because I've always, like, I think I start off James's games by saying, like, oh, like, I'm, 
getting I'm getting kind of lost. I might not be able to finish it. Yeah, but then I always do. I always do finish it. Crap, I've been looking a long time. And I have not seen a key. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, James. I hope you're forgiving. Uh, but I do want to try to beat it, but I'm going to try to beat it on easy difficulty. But it is, it's fun. I'm, I'm having, I just love walking around. Appreciating the snowy ambiance. So ten keys. Um, yeah, I never saw AI. And I never saw Eyes Wide Shut, which I heard was okay. But I, yeah, what are my favorite? I do like Shining. I liked, I liked Full Metal Jacket, even though it's brutal to watch. Um, I didn't really, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really like The Clockwork Orange. But uh, I started reading the book and I liked the book better. I don't know, I just, just didn't really resonate with me, the nihilism. Which that's what Kubrick is all about, I feel, is nihilism. And that's just like, I'm. that's not really like, my world view, I guess. That's what like a clockwork orange is all about, is like the futility of man being evil. But still it's pretty it's pretty well done, regardless. Oh Doctor Strange Love, that one's great. <laughs> the bodily fluids. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Strange Love is so funny. Kinda weird. Dry humor. Shining is really good though. That might be Shining might be one of my favorite cubers on the Paths of Glory. I can do this. It's five. I have five keys. I might I might need help, but if you guys know where one could be hiding, would one be like tucked away? Is that possible? Man, this is gonna this is gonna kick my butt. Yes! Oh, this one was far out. Okay, six out of ten. Yes. Okay, I can do this. We gotta do it. Just, we gotta complete it. I beat every one of James's games, I think. I'm pretty sure I have. Whoa! Oh, that's the door! <gasps> Holy crap. Wow, I don't even know how I got here. I am gonna get so lost. So there's the metal man, this is huge. Holy crap, man, this is crazy. <laughs> the book was better. <sighs> yeah, sue, sue me. <laughs> oh, is that the exit? That must be that must be it. That's the exit. Man, I am so I'm so in trouble. I bet I could do it though. Just have two more. Like, there's always usually like an interesting Reddit thread once in a while where it's like, can you guys name a story where the movie was better than the book? And there actually was like quite an interesting, quite a few interesting examples. But yeah, usually the book is better. What were one of the examples? Um, yes, just need one more. Uh, Stephen King sometimes like is. Sometimes the stories are, are weak. Sometimes, like, The Shawshank Redemption is a, is a short story by Stephen King. And I think, yes, I did it! Holy crap. Ten. Oh, I'm so glad I did easy difficulty. I'm too weak. Um, yeah, like, the, I never read the short story about The Shawshank Redemption, but the, the movie's a masterpiece. Oh, and there's the hotel. Sweet. Shh. 
Shining movie was better than the book. Oh yes, I get a little reward. <laughs> the music. And the fire was wow, I feel like this is a huge celebration. And is this all the ghosts? Oh my goodness. I don't want to miss anything. There's stuff up there. Christmas at the Overlook. Welcome back. Oh, this is awesome. Look at all these NPCs. I feel like I'm at a party. You can hear them all talking and stuff. Is that James? Is that James Smart? <laughs> Here's all of his other games. Oh, I love it. This is so fantastic. <laughs> See, this is like... Stuart... Stuart Ullman. This is like one of the best parts of... You know, like, giving a reward to the player. And I think this is a reward, just seeing all this crazy stuff. This is great. Did you make this in three days? Christmas is the Overlook. This is, a, this is a lot of stuff to do. Oh! That was the exit. That was awesome. What a, what a great endgame reward. There's Santa in the middle. Made for the Game to Unlock Game Jam. Thank you for participating, like always. I love the ending. That's like good performance. There's like, there's probably like 80 NPC skin mesh renders going on. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas! <laughs> that was awesome. Well done. Christmas at the Overlook. Yeah, I would recommend the easy difficulty, and it's totally worth it to get that ending. That was fun. And it was, like, relaxing, too, just walking around a maze. Uh, yeah, you guys can download all these in the link in the description below. Yeah, that was that was great. Love Santa dancing. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. We have Hyper Boreal. Well, this looks intense. Can you escape the frozen north after a horrible airplane crash? Oh, man. Um, by Thumpert, which I don't know if I know. Is Thumpert in the chat? I'm not sure I'm familiar with, with him and his work. But yeah, I'm excited to try it. Hyper Boreal. Let's dive in. Oh, there's Terrence. Thank you, Terrence, for uh, submitting a game. This is exciting. How is that done in three days? LOL, awesome job. I know this. It's possible. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like, we live in this age where you can, like, make a game in three days like this. And it's because of, like, the tools and, like, the internet and, like, kind of crowdsourcing a game using public stock assets and open, open source software. Public domain assets. It's pretty cool. I think I can increase it all the way. Nice. Oh, Chris Zabriskie, he's awesome. Can I, oh yes, here we go. Somewhere over the Canadian wilderness. Hello, Prophecy64, aka my brother, <laughs> from down the street. If you're bored, you can come play these games with me. It's more fun doing a live stream when there's someone in the room with me. Uh, but you don't, you don't have to come over, bro. This is cool. I love. Oh, I think I'm getting cold. That's. Oh man, that's not good. Will this warm me up. Ah, the fire will warm me up. Okay, sweet. Okay, this is cool. Good tutorial, easing into the game. I need to stay warm to find help. Oh man, these survival games, like, they give me that same sense of dread in a good way. Okay, so I have to get, okay, 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 gotta get to the 
sapphires. They give me the same sense of dread as like when Sonic couldn't breathe underwater, like in Sonic 1, you know, for Sega Genesis. Okay, warming up. Ah, oh, that's better. Cool. I like the dialogue, that adds a lot of personality to it. But then like the music starts when you're about to run out of air. It's like Um, it's good, it like gives tension. Makes the player feel, you know, just... And then when you win, it's like the sense of relief, and that's like, that's a reward for the player, you know? Oh crap, am I gonna make it? Wait. Okay, I think I'm warmed up. Is that a cabin over there? Oh, look at that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Can I make it, though? I'm kinda worried. Oh, I love the atmosphere. Like with the wind blowing and the music. This is great. Like it doesn't, I don't, I strongly believe it doesn't take as much as we think to like set the tone, help you root for the main character, make it feel professional. I love that, that vignette of the ice and stuff coming over the screen. That's really cool. Oh! A coat! Sweet. I just auto-grabbed it. Now I won't get so cold as easily. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, this is so cool. I love... Oh, crap. Okay, can I make it back? I love how, um, Terrence... What's that over there? There's, like, something up there, like a, some kind of particle effect. Um, I love how Terrence, like, he used the seven-day game launch challenge material, or the intermediate let's dev material, and he, but he added his own touches. Like, I recognize that house, but it, it, it took me a while. Um, is that a cabin over there? So can I make it to that? Um, like, I recognize the house, but that's because I barely recognize that house, actually, that cabin back there. But, um, I spent, like... I spent hours, you know, making the, that curriculum for the course, and so it, it kind of surprised me that I didn't recognize it right away, you know? Ah, that's better. Does that take up the fire? Alright, let's go. I'm guessing I did need... Yeah, I love this music. I, I do love Chris Zabriskie. Um, if you guys don't know, if there's any game developers, other aspiring game developers in the chat, Check out Chris Zabriskie's website. He's uh, just a musician. He's a composer. And he's a special case because he makes this beautiful cinematic electronic music. And it's free to use for any uh, commercial projects. Um, he just asks that you credit him, which is what Terrence did. Um, and that's all you got to do. Can I make it to that? Is there another? Oh, man. Yeah, he just asks that you credit him and then you can use you can sell a game with his music and that's exactly what I did with my first game Home is Where One Starts is there's a piano song at the end that was really beautiful and I just had to credit him in the end credits and I was able to sell the game so yeah that's those are kind of the, some of the things that make making a game in this day and age possible is using the talents of other people and you know giving them credit when they ask for it or paying them for a license if, it, if you can afford it his name is Chris Zabriskie with a Z um, maybe someone could type it in the chat who's familiar with his name okay I don't really know what to do now oh is that it is that where I go can I make that I don't see any more smoke in the air so I'm just gonna go for it I like the visual effects. I like that there's volumetric light in the atmosphere. That's pretty nice. Yeah, Chris Zabriskie. Yep. Um, check out his music. It's all on Spotify as well. So if you want to take a listen, you can find the songs you like on Spotify. And then you can uh, download them, like download uncompressed WAV files, and you can use them in your game or something. Yeah, that's what I did with my games. Uh, that's kind of what we do. Uh oh, is that a wolf? I don't want to freeze, though. Just got to get to the fire. 
And there's tons of artists like that. Um, where they they put their you know, they put their music or their 3D models or their sound effects. Where is everyone? Thank you, Peyton, for joining the course. That is awesome. I think we've had... Yeah, I don't know how many have joined yet. I don't know. There's only five seats available. Maybe we have one or two more left, but I'm not sure. But yeah, we'd love to have you guys join the full course. It's an awesome community. Yeah, Cliff says I'm loving the, the ambience. I, I love it, too. Is it ambience or ambience? But I'm a... I think setting the mood like that. And it's even like... I don't, I really, I feel strongly that, like, can I climb up this? Oh, crap. I feel strongly that, like, not every game has to be, like, a triple-A masterpiece with awesome combat system. Like, that's why the first tree kind of did as well as it did, actually, is because people, they would recommend it to friends because they said, oh, it's relaxing. It's like the difficulty of this game is just trying. It's like it's like um, I don't know. You're mapping out where you should go, and that's actually to me. I, I like that. Like it just you know, you take a breath, you take a deep, deep breath. You just you just breathe in the atmosphere. You kind of think about how scared this guy must be that his plane crashed, and he's like, "Where is everybody?" But anyway, like yeah, having a game that's minimalist or that doesn't have every single you know, brand new hit feature, like, it's not massively multiplayer, it doesn't have a Dark Souls combat system, it doesn't have, like, engrossing cinematics using motion capture technologies, like, I still feel like you don't need those things to have a successful game, and in fact, a lot of the most successful games, they realize what they are and they embrace it. instance, um, do you know one of the top rated games of all time on Steam is Hidden Folks? Have you guys heard of that game, Hidden Folks? It's made by a solo developer, and um, all the sound effects are done with the developer's mouth. So it's all like acapella? I don't know, it's all like, like when you open a door, the developer actually goes like... And stuff like that and you just what are you doing in that game in hidden folks all you're doing is just clicking on where people are hiding in a city or in a house or in a town and you're just trying to find all the hidden people just by clicking objects that's it and it's all black and white it's on black and white line art do you know what i mean like do you know what i'm saying like i feel like one of the the biggest errors a new game developer can do to be like is to say, I'm going to make the next Dark Souls. And I know, like, a lot of people love Dark Souls, and they're inspired by that. And that game brought them a lot of joy, so they want to make something similar to it. But I think it's wise to be realistic of what your capabilities are as a brand new solo game developer. And then as you progress, maybe one day you could make a Dark Souls type of game. You know what I mean? But it, it takes time. You can almost... You can almost say it would take decades, you know, to get to that point. Is that a village up there? I'm going to make it. Phasmophobia looks terrible, but the game is hella popular. I love Phasmophobia. And I think, like, for a solo developer, I think it's, you know, it's the avatar. Like, first of all, like, doing photorealistic humans in any kind of... Oh. Oh, freak. That freak. Felt like I heard a growl like right behind me. Phasmophobia, it's amazing that he even pulled it off at all. This he's a solo developer in the UK, I think near London. Um because yeah, doing you know, like animated people, photorealistic style graphics as a solo developer is really brave. And he did it, and it's not perfect, but the game is still awesome. You know what I mean? I, I love Phasmophobia. It's one of my favorite games. 
thinking I might stream that soon just to play it. Just to hang out live on stream. Maybe talk about some of the Unity assets he used. Oh crap. Oh shoot, am I gonna die? Oh man. Dot dot dot. Unknown voice. There is someone over here. Somebody help me grab him. I think he may be from the plane crash. Am I saved? Was it a dream? Honey. Honey, wake up. <laughs> I did not expect this. We just landed. Oh no. Well, that's a good thing. The end. Thanks for playing. <laughs> um, that was that was great. I was not expecting that ending. Yeah, I think Terrence did a great job of like giving it his own touch. I love the atmosphere. I love the music. The wind sound effects were perfect. Um, yeah, I I loved it. And it was it was chill. You know, you're just walking from A to B. But just going to like, you know, you're getting lost in this different world and and then you get the rug pulled for out from under you, which is kind of funny. It's like, oh, it's, he was just asleep on the plane. Probably probably says more about the main character's anxiety than anything. That's his nightmare he's having while he's asleep on the plane. Or I guess it could have been a woman. I'm not sure. Nice. <laughs> that was great. Thanks for submitting it. You 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 like hit hit the nail. You hit the head on the nail. You hit the nail on the head, sorry. Oh my gosh. You really like knocked it out of the park with just like setting that like the you know, the atmosphere and the music and the wind and the environment was beautiful. Um yeah, you could like if you wanted to turn this into more than a three day prototype, you could have you could have like had like you know, you could have like here heard his inner dialogue as he's like struggling to stay alive get to know him more and like be like why like maybe you know i like the ending i think that could work building up to like his anxiety because like if that's what he's like constantly dreaming about on the plane i don't know that's that's interesting hyperboreal yeah that was an amazing game i think everyone everyone liked watching it too thank you that was fun. I'm just thinking this that scene remembered me. Oh, oh yeah, the first scene from the forest. I love the forest. And again, that was intense. Yeah, it reminds me of, of Bioshock, the opening of Bioshock where you're in the plane. Oh man. Yeah, I'm just thinking about like I I liked I liked the world you'd build. Like I wonder like how much how you can make it more in depth, you know what I mean? I, I enjoyed it. And I and I like I like slower paced first person games like that. That's kind of like, that's my jam, you know. All right, thanks for submitting that. That was great. Okay, um, okay, we're, we're halfway through. White Snow of Hope by Mike Lee. Oh, yeah, Mike had one of the, Mike had one of the questions during the, uh, the Q&A. So this is a short narrative experience by Mike Lee. Thank you for submitting it. I'm excited to check it out. I hope I, hope I answered your question earlier. I hope that was helpful information. Let's check it out. White Snow of Hope. Oh wait, which what's it called? What's the file name? Called Oh, it should be there. Winter Game Jam, is it game? Shoot, I don't know what the file name's not lining up. Yeah, it's game. Let's do it. GDC Winter. What was that? It's my, sorry, my US got some kind of disconnected Windows thing. It's game. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, Mike, for being here. I'm excited to play your game. The year is 20. Oh, 30. Sorry. 
the sun has finally sputtered out and died. Oh, this is this is tense. We are now living in darkness. This is very apocalyptic. I like the volumetric light. My truck is not functioning. I will need a toolbox and some gasoline to get it working. Okay, let's look. Is that gasoline? Nope. Nice. This is the door, like that was a nice sound effect. Okay, okay. I should find a tall building to scout the area for a gas station. White snow of hope. Oh, very, very cinematic. And I'm assuming that's the tall building we should go to. I love just exploring these kind of places. Oh, this is like, there's been, these are like skyscrapers. Okay, I, I get what's going on. That's intense. I like it. The sun has burnt out. That is, it's depressing. It reminds me of like, I saw a meme earlier where it's like, your face when you're like in third grade and you your teacher tells you in six billion years, the sun will expand to a red giant and engulf the earth in flames. And you're just like, no, we're gonna die. <laughs> We gotta. We don't have to worry about that for a while. <laughs> okay, cool. I will go over. Here. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I was taking the cheap way out. How convenient, but not good on top of the tower. Time to scout the area. Okay, there we go. Oh, I think I saw my truck. Okay, perfect. It's giving me like, okay, awesome. It's giving me Breath of the Wild vibes. Oh, the music's beautiful. Breath of the Wild vibes, you know, going on the tower to scout everything. I like how you did the elevator. Yeah, the sound design is good. Because it just takes one, like, really low quality door opening sound to kind of, like, throw off the immersion for the player. Okay, yes. Okay, now I see it. Okay, this is cool. And there's the gas station. Alright, I am so doing this. We're gonna fix that truck. And that's what's cool about games is like I know a movie a movie can take you to like a different world and make you feel like well what would it be like to be on earth after the sun is burnt out but what a movie can't do is like literally give you the choice to be like okay where do I do next like how do I get how do I fix my truck what do I do and you make choices and that those choices help you they help you feel like more engaged Here's a toolbox. Should be enough materials to fix the truck. Wow, this is awesome. I wonder if I'm like, am I like the last human on Earth? Because that was something that really stuck with me about Soma. Which, you know, sorry if there's a spoiler. Oh, wait, crap. That's the tool. Where was the gas station? The gas station. Oh, wait, there it is. Soma is, again, it's like it's very existential kind of like extinction of humanity kind of game. Um, and at one point you actually meet the last living human being on earth and it is like it's so sobering and depressing and it just it's like a gut punch and you actually I think you decide what to do you decide if how you should end humanity if you should like you know like leave her alone or something nice that should be enough to get the truck going wow I, I think I did it can I crouch just love exploring for any Easter eggs. And I think the truck, oh, there it is. Man, I didn't even see that, that gas station when I was started the game. Oh, there's snow particles here. 
Um, a small thing you could do is uh, make the snow particles, attach them to the player so they follow the player around. And then in the particle like settings, there's something called, you set it instead of local space, which means like the snowflakes would literally follow the player. You set the space to world, world space. And then like there'd be snow particles with like it was following the player the whole time. Did I do it? Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Man, beautiful. Thank you for playing. Awesome. I loved it. Again, like that goes perfectly like with the last game. White Snow of Hope. That was cool. Yeah, it goes like totally like with Hyperboreal and just I don't know, like they're kind of apocalyptic. You're kind of just getting lost in this world. And you're just taking your time. It's relaxing. There's no enemies. There's conflict, though. Like, don't get me wrong. There is conflict. And the conflict is like, am I going to make it out alive? It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's the main, it's protagonist versus the environment, which is a great, is a great setting. You know, it's a great story told millions of times with their own little twists to make it interesting. That was great. Thank you, Mike, for submitting that. That was fun. Thank you for playing. Thank you. Thank you for making it. Yeah, it was it was fun. All right, moving on. White Snow of Hope. Okay, this is from Cliff. Cliff is in the chat. Cliff has uh, been helping, you know, being part of the GDU community for a long time. Thank you, Cliff, for for being here and for submitting reviews and everything. Appreciate it. Winter Quest 0, 0. And it looks like I'm a raccoon which I do have experience with animal-driven exploration games. So yeah, I'm excited to check it out. Let's play Winter Quest, if I can find it. I think it's this one. I'm pretty sure. Let's, let's hopefully. Nice. Oh, I like the, the pixelated grass. I like the music. Oh, there's a guy. <laughs> Can I kill him? Wow, how did you do? Oh, wait, I saw Brad, spacebar. Oh, did I not do that? I saw it, but maybe I screwed it up. Oh, I kind of saw something. Hello. Hi, Steve. How's it going? Hey, Steve. Wait, I thought his name was Brad. <laughs> Pretty good. Still just hanging out in your underwear, eh? Oh, hey, Eric, the Viking village chief, is having some problems at the village today. I know it's your day off, but I think he, they could use your help. Oh, yeah? Any idea what's going on? When I was jogging past there, I got super cold, like wanting to actually put on a pair of pants <laughs> cold and noticed it was snowing just over the village. WTF, mate? <laughs> For real. Also, I saw what looked like Moose, uh, but all glowy and weird and stuff. Might want to check on him, too. Oh, man, I hope he's okay, and he hasn't been trying to get to the magical relics again. Uh, that, hey, that's probably it. Oh, well, I guess I'm off to the village then. I'll see you around, Steve. Later, Tater. Love it. I love the, I love this raccoon. It's just it's like this magical creature. Okay, I don't really know which direction to go. That's my cave, and there's my friend, Steve. Oh, I get it now. It's like the mouse. Oh, the pointer. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, I'm just going to try to get out of this forest. I like the music. It's very relaxing. And I guess it started snowing. It's cool. There's like attacks and everything. Maybe Cliff is using the animal, animal player controller by like Malber's animation or something. Oh, I see stuff over there. All right, I'll try. Let's get over to these places. I'm guessing I go over. I gotta find pants, I guess. Got the jump working. The jump's good. And I know it 
if this if something like this was made in three days that, that is crazy when you think about it if this is to become like a full game one day like you already got like the footsteps and everything which is crazy that blows my mind but yeah you could just add a sound effect when he hits the snow just go poof just a little impact sound Brad and Steve, slash Steve, is the only NPC with dialogue in this poem. Okay, cool. Um, what is that green diamond thing? Really relaxing and polished. I like it. Yeah. What is that thing? I'm so curious. That green gem is over there. Oh, is this a Cinti pack? Or am I like going the wrong way too? I might, I might need Cliff to tell me where to go. Oh, oh, I, okay, I see. Maybe this part's unfinished. I see some T pose people. But yeah, gotta find pants. Relatable. <laughs> Actually, this looks like a really big map, and I'm kind of surprised my computer is streaming streaming this at 1440p decently. At 30, yeah, I, this is a high refresh monitor, so I think this is going 140 frames, and it's actually the performance isn't is not that bad. And looking at all the stuff, like all the trees and everything, that's that's actually. I wonder, yeah curious why the performance is as good as it as it is because if i did something like this i feel like i'd have to optimize it oh is that the moose oh that is okay cool, cool cool let's go to the moose there is no right or wrong way it's a relaxing kind of game which is that's that's kind of how i that's how i roll i see like a dragon over there maybe is that what that is do you see that can you guys see my mouse yeah is this the moose with the shadow things? It's cool, like, what a big, like, fun, like, there's so many, like, points of interest. You just, like, don't even know, like, where you want to go first, which, that's kind of like that feeling of, like, a Breath of the Wild and everything, which, oh, this is not a moose. This is a bear. But it sounds like there's no, hello. This is cool. I've seen this asset before, I think. Oh, is it, like, kind of glowing? Oh, there, yeah, you see that? There's like a shader effect on the orange parts. I thought I saw it. It was like, kind of like glowing with yellow stripes. Um, we're talking about game development using assets and everything. And you can still like, using the assets that are available, it can save you so many hours of work. But at the end of the day, you still got to put in the hours of time to like build a world and give people dialogue and man, look at all this stuff and I'm shocked that I'm going I'm at 60 frames a second now at 1440p which is cool this all this is all this must be the Cinti pack stuff can I jump on this or will this be bad oh, okay I was like am I gonna go straight down um this is cool oh wait you can punch Oh wait, okay, so Cliff says, you can even walk on the water because otherwise you'd be trapped. Funny thing, the moose and an undead knight are also responding to the controls right now. Oh, like, when I move forward, are they moving forward too? I don't know where the, I don't know where the, I'm gonna try, I wanna go back to punch the, I wanna punch the bear. I didn't try that, whoa! This is cool, you're getting, I can tell Cliff you're getting used to like the animator controller and Unity and stuff. That was... Oh, that was crazy. Oh, man. He's like, I'm pissed. But even just, like, ha adding these NPCs and everything. And... Um, I hit, like, his left foot, and by coincidence, it made the animation like he, like, limped on that foot. Oh, he's pissed. Um, and it was just, it was like, it was like a funny coincidence because it looked so professional. Yeah, like right there. And I was like, oh man, it's like, it's just, he's using inverse kinematics on like injury damage detail on the on the 3D mesh. Um, 
It's cool that the bear has footprints too. That's wild. This is cool. Um, so the, the moose and stuff are somewhere. Is, is there anything else, Cliff, you want me to, to check out? Because it, it sounds like there's not an end game screen yet. Oh, there's a, there's a dragon. Oh yeah, I wish, I guess, I wish there was like little footstep sounds with the raccoon. Oh, I like the Aurora Borealis at the top. Man, seeing the giant city is pretty staggering. Um, I wish there's a lot of work to do. Most of my time went into the world design, figuring out how to, I don't know, dialogue system. Well, you got it working, and in only a few days, honestly, that's, that's an accomplishment. It's fun, like, yeah, I, sorry, I, was, I don't think I finished my thought. These assets help us save time, which is great, but you still, there will always, you will still, no matter what, you still need to put in your, like, personality and your thoughts and, like, what kind of story and, like, just doing that can be a lot of work. Like, thinking about writing all the dialogue for one character and then doing the side quest and being a quest designer. And that's not even count, that's not even, like, including all the random stuff you need to do, like, make a menu and do the sound effects and do the music programming so the music comes in at the right time and fades in and out. I don't know, it's just, it's a lot. That's why, like, I created GDU, Game Dev Unlocked, was to... This, this reminds me of, like, an MMO RPG or something, like, just going around this giant world and, like, finding these fun characters to talk to and getting quests and everything. So, yeah, it's, like, I guess, yeah, Cliff, if you were to keep working on it, like, it's up to you, like... Oh, wow, you got the... This is something... See, this, this is something I can appreciate. See how, like, the raccoon aligns to the terrain? Do you know how freaking hard that is? And do you know how many weeks I spent trying to figure that out as a new game developer when I was working on my my game, The First Tree? I almost, at one point, I was like, I'll just ship it without the align to terrain feature. And that meant, like, every time, like, the fox was always straight like never like going down a slope is just be like this capsule hanging off the slope of a, of a terrain if that makes sense i don't know it just it looked horrible can i punch the dragon oh i can kind of push him i guess he's a rigid body in unity yeah and i i, I figured it was the malbury's pack and that's okay like it's it, it lets you focus on doing the game you want which you know it can be like the dialogue and adding the music and creating the mood or the tone so that's cool um oh he started cliff has started over using the universal render pipeline this is cool yeah i'll, I'll call it quits here but i love like the world you built it reminds me of you know just something like like Breath of the Wild and stuff, which I love those games. I, I want to make an exploration game like similar to that. You know what I mean? I tried punching the dragon. Oh, punch. Punch the magic dragon. Uh, I, nothing happened, though. Um, so Roughnick says, what's the name of the angling feature in Unity? So I know Malber's, the animal controller. Here, let's take a look at it real quick. Because I want to help... I want to help enable all developers to make their kind of game. Because at the end of the day, you still have to put in a ton of work to make your game yours. And that includes, like, the story and the dialogue. You know, just, I, I said all that stuff already. Like, you will still have to put in a ton of work, even with all these systems pre-designed for you, if that makes sense. But this is the Animal Controller by Malbers. And I've played around with it a lot, and it's it's excellent. And it has everything you need. It has does all the foot... It does paw prints. It does terrain alignment it does like the jumping and like here like it shows you like you can go over here and hit dig or eat like all these actions are pre-made and you know you still like you know like what cliff did is he still like had to get the raccoon 3d model and like adjust it and make it work and add in the animations for like attack and replace it because i think the pack just comes like this blue wolf thing it's only 15 dollars, and that's that's the craziest thing to me is like if you were to like before this existed you'd have to pay a developer 
maybe ten thousand five thousand to ten thousand dollars to make a system like this for you and now it's fifteen dollars just crazy and this is cool animal controller it looks like you have an np you have like a humanoid look you have climb like zelda style climbing there's been a giant update to this i have not seen all this stuff you get teleport aiming target projectiles invent uh interactables that's so cool and then you can focus on making your game your game if that makes sense gravity changer that's awesome yeah i'll put it i'll put it in the that's brad and slash steve yeah you guys should check it out there's a hard mathematical name for it i can't remember Ugh. what was it it's like you're you're norm like you're using you're calculating the normals from the terrain mesh so like each triangle you know it points a nor it points the a normal is just the where like the direction of that triangle is facing i guess the texture wise it's like imagine like an arrow like invisible arrow coming from like one polygon and it calculates what the slope is from that normal and i, I forgot what the name is though okay cool thanks for submitting that cliff i like the magical feel of it i like the goofy feel of it, it was very like whimsical and fun fun hearted light-hearted maybe i don't know if you can hear my kids screaming Okay, cool. Let's let's move on. And I'm I gotta I gotta sign off soon. How many more we got? Uh, defend your igloo. And then we got Jade Jade's game. I always enjoy Jade's games that he submits for these game jams. Okay, defend your igloo by Bug B Games. Let's let's do that one. Made with Unreal Engine. Oh yeah, and then. That was the other technical thing, like IK or inverse kinematics. That's what I had to use because I didn't have the Malbur's animal controller with the first tree. I had to use an asset called Final IK, which is used for everything involving inverse kinematics, which if you don't know is basically just math, math like of like in, Ze in Breath of the Wild, link climbing, because each rock face can be a different depth or like can be more inset into the cliff you need to calculate where to place the hand and but you also need to calculate it so like it doesn't like his arm doesn't dislocate in a weird looking way in the animation and that's what inverse kinematics is, is using math in that way to make it like naturally like a limb like you know like your elbow is a joint and like calculating all that with math anyway i don't really know how to explain it someone smarter can do that um defend your igloo um, do we have the developer here? Okay, I have no idea. Is this like tower defense? Oh yeah, it is. Defenses. I have two. Okay, this is cool. 100 coins. Oh, there they come. Don't you dare. Oh crap, is he? Oh man, that was hard. Okay. We're going to do two. Okay, this is this is cool. I love tower defense games. I love the Kingdom Rush games. I love Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> these these little evil penguins. Oh shoot! Okay, that's not gonna work. Okay, that's okay. It's just trial and error. I think they need to be getting hit as much as they can, so I should place them over there. Okay, kill him! Kill him! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to double up. Oh, they're kind of like homing icicles. Sweet. This is cool. If this is like the developer's first game or something, that is incredible. Okay, should we should we do this? Should we triple up? Yeah, I figured closer to spawn. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know if it'd be like two bullets per enemy or just I didn't know it'd be like 10 bullets to kill the penguins. Um, but this is working, right? But yeah, in retrospect, they need more time. You know, you think about, even in like Plants vs. Zombies, like you see like the traffic cone zombie for the first time and you're like, this is taking forever to kill this guy. I kind of want to save it for this 300 one. We'll do that. <laughs> 
yeah jason's talking about the like the little lines the gizmo lines that is like because that doesn't look like a mesh at all that looks straight up like a, some kind of path a drawn path how would you do that i i don't know how i would do that like draw like the little ring like see like the area around around the uh the our towers with our projectile towers oh sweet i am getting enough okay time to die is that just i wonder if it's different kind of ice like icicles or if it's just a bigger range oh that is way faster oh you you stupid penguins don't stand a chance Oh man, I've been playing almost two hours. I think we got one more game after this. Okay, I just want to do one more of this. And I wonder I wonder how many levels. It'd be nice if there was like I guess a little level indicator. Oh man, they are dying so fast. Alright, we'll do one more round. I gotta defend that igloo. What if it's like the penguins just trying to get a home? I'm assuming they're evil penguins because they're coming from an evil looking portal like they're invaders or something but this is cool made in three days well done this is just relaxing just see, seeing my creation defend defend my igloo you said nothing <laughs> do not pity the penguins <laughs> and then when will this raid his raid of terror end yeah there, it's there's no sound effects which you actually like a beginner a beginner game dev mistake is they get like this loud explosion oh, i can Oh, you you are you guys are screwed. Um, a common game dev mistake is they get like a loud explosion sound. Or like imagine like you you tell Unity to play a sound effect after every icicle, and imagine like some guy goes on freesound.org and just gets a loud gunshot like, and when you start playing a sound like that, like you know every tenth of a second because you're shooting so many icicles. It gets really repetitive. It almost sounds like this weird robotic glitch sound effect. And so when you're doing like a fast kind of effect like this, it almost helps to make it as subtle or imperceptible, like a, sm a really, really quiet sound effect, make it as subtle as possible. And even if it's playing like every tenth of a second, like T -t 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 -t, it's just like a tiny little tap sound effect. And maybe like a different kind of sound effect, like just slightly louder when it's hitting the penguin, like. And just make it really, you know, quiet. Then it won't be annoying. Like it's e with sound design, it's easy to make it too like intense. But if you made it like really small sound effects, then that could add a lot to like and like maybe a countdown timer, like ding, 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 and then just hear like the icicles shooting, like. And then you hear it like it's a different sound effect when it hits the penguin. That could be like very satisfying. It's just like it's it's a very tactile sensation of hearing it and then seeing you make a machine. And you're hearing the sound of like the penguins getting destroyed and everything. That was cool. Good job making that in three games. I yeah, a tower defense game. That was fun. Again, it's like it's a proof of concept, right? And that is a prototype because it is three days. We're not we're not expecting the world, but it's fun to think about what you could add when you're ready. If that makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, Leo says the animation on the Kingdom Rush games are so good. Yeah, it is and. There's so much work put into the animation there. And something I like about the Kingdom Rush games is all the Easter eggs. Um, I don't know, like, if you're, like, in a jungle level, like, you'll see Indiana Jones. Or, you know, like, technically, like, a parody character version of Indiana Jones come out. And all those things make the games have a lot of character and personality. And they're fun. Like, the gameplay is really solid in those two. All right, we got our last game. And then I'm going to sign off and get ready for the holidays. 
I am not sorry. It's a concept, and I think it's made by Jade, and I really enjoy Jade's games. Jade always, like, he has this amazing talent of combining all these asset packs and making something totally unique and making really high-quality stuff fast. Um, yeah, let's, let's try it out. I am not sorry. Um, is it loop? I think it's loop. I am not sorry. Oh, and, and yeah, like, holy, what the, and yeah, I like the post-processing effects that Jade uses. That's a great way of, that's a great way of adding, you know, like, trying to make the game your own, adding like a filter over everything. Oh, wait, am I, am I in control now? Oh, okay, I was in control the whole time. <laughs> okay, I just, I literally just watched myself get killed because I thought it was a cinematic. Oh man, this is going to be stressful. Can I, okay, I can just walk. Is it going to change? Oh, it's like Resident Evil type of cameras. Alone in the dark. Oh, this is stressful. This is cool though, I love the filter. It's kind of like this weird, I don't know, it looks like... EGA, like an old, like, dithering effect, like an old... Yeah, it reminds me of, like, Alone in the Dark, honestly, a little bit. Old PC games. The music is cool. Okay, I'm hoping these guys are gonna help me. I'm coming! I love the, the camera angles. Yes! The music is cool. It, it is, like, that was unique music. I know it's just a I know it's just a concept. But yeah, just telling the player like even if it was just like, you know, you think like WarioWare. WarioWare just saying like it gives you literally one word description of what of how to play the micro games when you're playing WarioWare. So even if it was something like in the screen it just says run. Then I would have thought it was a cinematic. <laughs> and I'm sure Jade knows all this stuff. I am not sorry. Man, it's it's crazy. It just throws you into this. Does he always follow me? Oh, man. And I like how, like, you're... I'm just wondering what else he can do. Oh, man. Oh, crap. I like... There's no UI or anything, and it does make it feel, like, a bit more creepy. Jade, Jade loves, like, horror game things. Totally different style with the camera, too. I, I agree. That's what Nathaniel says. Yeah, it's always following me. I'm just trying to limp away. Oh! <laughs> they just watched me die. Oh, wait. Can I walk on that car, do you think? On that incline or not? Maybe not. That was interesting. That, that was... That was like, it threw you into this world, which I actually think could be a powerful storytelling tool where you're like, what is going on? I'm limping away from this. Concept demo made for a quick little game jam. I'm really like, I'm, an, I'm intrigued with this. I'm almost like enamored with this idea. Because I like how, I like the visual style. I like how it just threw me in there. The music was really off kilter, like with the string. Like, I don't know, it was like a out of tune, like kind of violin or guitar or something. Um, that like left me wanting more, to be honest. I, I liked it a lot. The creature, and it just threw you in. Like if you were like, here we can get off my my, my screen. Yeah, if you were to like to build up to it, like it just throw you in this world where it's like, okay, we're in some weird, yeah, we're in some weird like abandoned city or whatever, and then you're just a guard, and you're like, what are you a guard for? Like, you don't know, but that's okay. It's like one of the great strengths of Mad Max Fury Road. It just throws you in this world, and it it doesn't like explain anything, and that could be, it can it can be attention grabbing. You're like, what is going on? It makes you wonder. Like, you want to try to piece together what's happened in this world, like in like in Mad Max. Like, you just see like the, I don't know, I can't remember their names or anything, but like the zealots spraying like the silver, like the chrome on their face. I don't know. You're just like, what is going on? And you you love it. You just want to figure out why they're doing the things they're doing. 
Um, yeah, that that left me wanting more. I am not sorry. Yeah, I, if you could add like a build up, if you could add a build up of like you're the guard and maybe like your you're like your your superior officer is telling you, hey, can you just explore the warehouse or whatever? And then like this shadow creature comes out and hits your leg, and then you have to escape. Like that would have like a beginning, middle, and end. That's interesting. Very cool concept. That's it for our winter edition game jam, everyone. This has been fun. He's gonna get you. I really hated Resident Evil cameras. Um, I, you know, if they take a little bit more like design intention because the mistake you can do is like if you're moving right and then all of a sudden the camera, it actually it breaks an old film rule, which is the 180 degree rule. If you flip the camera 100, more than 180 degrees, then if you're going right, then all of a sudden you'd be going left, even though you're pressing right. It takes it takes work to make the camera system work, but I, I don't think those cameras don't bother me as much. If they're done, if they're they've put a little bit of care into where the cameras are placed and everything. And nothing like tripped me up in that game. But yeah, I'm sure I've been screwed over by a bad Resident Evil camera placement before. That's funny. Very creepy and spooky. Reminds me of a game called walk oh that's interesting that was cool good good job thank you everybody for submitting these games that has been it's been so much fun playing them we had about 60 people watching thanks for thanks for watching um how many how many coupon codes do we have left oh that was it okay okay the coupon codes are used i was going to show you guys a testimonial video <laughs> but We'll do, I'll do another stream and we'll do coupon codes another time. But thank you to the people who signed up. I'm really excited for you to join the course and you'll get access to all these bonuses and everything. So we'd love to have you and definitely take advantage of the discord server. That's a lot, where a lot of people find help, especially in the help needed channel. And what else? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be taking off for a week or two. I'm going to build this new small form factor PC, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for buying Few Man Shoe. Thanks to everybody who redeemed the coupon. That means a lot. That helps support the program. Um, oh, that's what I got to do. I got to turn on the Unreal Engine content. I'm going to publish it. It's seriously like five, six hours of amazing content. And like I said, I, I helped. I collaborated with the Unreal, Unreal Sensei guy, Zach. But it's his content, and I love it personally. Like I'm going through it. I'm learning so much about Unreal Engine because I'm actually working in Unreal Engine at that new VR company I was telling you guys about. And I need to get better at Unreal Engine. I'm a Unity guy, and I'm learning so much about Unreal and everything. And his material is excellent. It's been so good. So that just got added. I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to publish it right now. And it's like five hours. And then the rest of it is coming in January. Um, okay, to all the GDU students currently enrolled, um, please send me your questions. In the course curriculum, there's like a Q&A form, and that gives me a chance to stay organized and keep on top of all the questions I get and also to research them and give you guys good answers. But this game jam was fun. Big thanks to Melanie for setting it up. Big thanks to all the people who contribute so much to Game Dev Unlocked. There was a long, there was, for a long time I was trying to do everything, and it was, it was not sustainable. And it was one of those things where I just, it was, it was making me not want to keep working on the course because I just I was being overwhelmed and so now we have amazing people that help on the course and just the students help each other which I can't tell you how much I appreciate because it is game development is hard and you'll run into so many roadblocks and I seriously I'm amazed at like I see these eight games and these are people that you know like I try to help people with the videos and the content and we try to help people on the discord server but these are people that figured it out on their own and it seriously like it puts you guys in another league and i strongly believe like ho like uh like honing in on these skills like that makes you more employable and it helps you get practice so that not only can you get better jobs and maybe like negotiate pay raises at a tech job it doesn't have to be a game development job it can just be even just any type of development job or some type of tech job at all because it proves that you can finish stuff that you can google stuff that you can solve problems on your own and that's what's amazing. So big congrats to everyone who's working on a game, who's really getting through the hard parts, who's running into a bug but not giving up. That's amazing. Keep doing that. It will pay off. You will get better. Because with practice, that's how you improve. That's the really the only way you'll get better at any kind of big 
in-depth like skill like game development which is honestly game development is just a million different skills under one roof pretty much it's a lot to learn but you guys are making huge progress and and i appreciate it i appreciate you guys uh being part of the community so yeah i'll, I'll check out the i'll check out a little bit of the, the chat and then i'm gonna head out uh fussy jerk face says free for existing students yes and this is one of the last really big updates for GDU. And it's going to be hours and hours of really high quality Unreal Engine tutorials. It's a brand new, con it's brand new content. You can't find it anywhere except GDU. And also Zach, Unreal Sensei, he has his own master class. And that content will be available on his master class as well, which is really cool. Yeah, and it's all Unreal Blueprint. No, no C++. It's lots of asset packs. And here's the cool thing is I asked Zach, I was like, can we just use free assets? Because, you know, making a game does involve buying a lot of assets. But in this case, you can, um, in this case, everything's free. And I made a bunch of public domain sounds that you guys can use with your game project in Unreal. So, yeah, I think, I think it would be great. Uh, thank you, Grim Raven. Thank you so much. Um, Janice says, how long does it take to learn? There's lots of material in the full course. There, there is a section that's very popular, which is the seven-day game launch challenge. And you make your very first game. Actually, there's the beginner section, and you can make a game in a day, a mobile casual game. And then the intermediate section, which is the seven-day game launch challenge, same thing. Uh, you can make a, a first-person story-driven game in a week, pretty much. And you get homework assignments and stuff. And you get assets and everything. Mouth sound, SFX pack one. Oh, man, you have to... Need to get a real pro. Need to get the hidden folks developer for that. <laughs> um, Alex just signed up. Okay, yeah, if you didn't get a Discord invite, you should have. It might have gone to spam. Check spam, and I'll make sure that it's sent out for you. I'll look for Alex and make sure that it went in my... I'll check my logs. You, you should be getting a Discord invite with the email. Sorry if you haven't gotten that yet. It should happen. It should just take a couple minutes. Um... Yeah, you should be getting an email. But yeah, I'll, I'll look at that right now, Alex. I think that's it. Yeah, thank you, Digit Alex, for signing up for the seven-day challenge. I appreciate that. Roughnik says I should make a stream. I was thinking about it. I like streams because they're more relaxed for me personally. Like they, they mesh better with my personality. And editing a really nice video, it takes so much time and energy that I don't really have. So I like live streams a little better. I was thinking about streaming if I was to build that small form factor PC with my my crazy rare DDR5 RAM. I was thinking of live streaming it, but maybe I won't, to be honest. I'm not sure. I was thinking about it, though. What case did you get for the build? I got the Cooler Master NR200P Max. So it's the new one that's really hard to find. I somehow got it just because I checked Amazon at the right time. And it comes with like a nice super small PSU for 850 watts and then a nice... AIO cooler, water cooler. Um, so it's it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be a quick build. It's gonna be my new game dev machine for the next five six years. So I'm excited. Okay, cool. All right, last question. Then I'm gonna head out. Um, and Janice, I yeah, I answered your question, Janice. It's about day to make a game, seven days to make the intermediate game. But there's hours and hours of content for the Unreal section. I think that would take weeks to probably get down. Because there's quite a few videos. Because it's, it's complicated with blueprints and Unreal Engine. But we focus on Unity, which is a little bit easier. No coding, really. Easy to follow along. Yeah. All right. Leo says, any advice as someone who is good at programming but bad at everything else in game development? Yeah, this is a popular question. Because we have so many like talented engineers in game development because that's what it is. It's computer engineering. That was like That's kind of different from the background I came from. Because I'm more of an artist than a programmer. But that's a good question. In, like, there's stuff in the course. Like, I try to brain up as much helpful stuff to help non-artists as possible. But if you're not part of the course, which is okay, on my YouTube channel, I have an art, like, how to make striking art in games. And that's, you know, right now you can watch it on my YouTube channel. And basically you can, like, narrow it down to a few principles. And that's things like color theory and contrast and negative space like those three things alone would help um and i know like there's a lot other things that go into it like sound design and camera 
placement and animation. There, there's a lot to learn, right? And it sounds like you're good at programming, them, but not everything else. So I would just encourage you to start off small and keep it as simple as possible and just try to learn as you go. And then the best thing I tell people is analyze the games you play and play smaller games, especially games on itch.io and sort by most popular. Can you guys hear my kids screaming? They are screaming. Um, sort by most popular on itch and study them like on it, like literally take notes, whether it's like with a notepad or like on your phone, like take notes as you're playing these small indie games and s ask yourself, why did that sound like, like you, there's a sound when you pick up an object in a first person game, like ask yourself, why did that sound sound good? Why did that sound work? Ask yourself, why are these graphics better than the last game I played? Compare, compare them. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a hard question to answer because all these are disciplines that take decades to master. So you can't, I can't give you like one answer to like make you good at everything involved in game development. But I can, I can tell you steps of how you can learn to consume games and art and stories and music in a way that can help teach yourself, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. If, if you need more help, you know, that's why I made the online course. And there's also free stuff on the YouTube channel with stuff like that. So hope that answers your question, Leo. Okay, cool. We hear your kids barely. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, and Jason has good advice too. Okay, I got to go. Um, it's been fun. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the fun games. Those are really fun. Um, I love the winter themes. They were all really entertaining and atmospheric. So amazing job on that. And yeah, I think we'll call it quits. Hope you guys have a great, happy holidays of your choice. And hopefully I'll be around. I'm going to start working on my new game more. And that's what I'm really excited to do. So I will still be around doing the monthly Q&A streams for GDU for the long-term future. But I don't know what I'm going to do with YouTube, to be honest. We'll see. I just, I'm trying to be more authentic and to work on the things that I'm really passionate about. And right now I'm really passionate about my next game, which I can't wait to work on. So thanks for being here. Thanks for submitting the games. And I will see you guys on the GDU Discord server. See ya.